The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. Like many shopping districts in the Bronx, the one on Southern Boulevard is trying to find new ways of building business and encouraging Bronxites to spend their hard-earned dollars in the Bronx where they can do the most good. So tonight's guests have launched a new website for Southern Boulevard and even more important, are laying the groundwork for future growth and are paving a road that might be valuable for other Bronx merchant groups to follow. The Director of Community Development at WEDCO, the Women's Housing and Urban Development Corporation, is Carrie McLean. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. And also on the telephone tonight from Yarobi Clothing and Accessories is the Vice President of the Southern Boulevard Merchant Association, Abdu Yaya. Good evening, Abdu. How are you? I'm fine. Good, good. Thank you for joining us. We're going to start here with Carrie in the studio, and then we'll uh, chat with you if you don't mind. Um, Carrie, let's start with you. Yes. First of all, what is the relationship of WEDCO to uh, this burgeoning Merchants okay. Association on Southern Boulevard? So WEDCO has been working um, in the Southern Boulevard neighborhood for a few years. We actually have an affordable housing development uh, nearby. And uh, we began to survey the neighborhood to assess what the needs were among um, residents in the neighborhood as well as businesses in the neighborhood. So from that surveying effort, the need for an organization to represent Southern Boulevard merchants arose, and thus um, we worked with merchants to uh, form the association. How, how many businesses are in the area? I mean, give, give, me, give me and, of course, our viewers the scope of what exactly we're talking about. So it's a one-mile area between East 174th Street down to Westchester Avenue at Simpson Street, and there are approximately 123 businesses and organizations in the neighborhood. That's a significant number. It's more, you know, it's one of those things where, gee, there's a lot of businesses here, but that number, 123, is, is large. Um, Abdul, let's bring you into the conversation. Tell me about your business and what the issues are for your business that helped uh, you and your colleagues there on Southern Boulevard to form this association. Hi. Yeah, hi. Did you hear my question? Yes. Okay, so tell me about your business and what it is uh, in your business uh, that kind of spurred you on and inspired you to start this uh, Merchants Association. In, in Southern Bluva, we do a lot of business there. Clothes, shoes. Okay. And full cards, hats. T-shirts, sunglasses. I got that. But with 123... Yeah, we, we, we sell a lot of things in Southern Blue. We appreciate uh, that situation. You help us to, uh, to, to, to grow up our business in Southern Blue. We invite all Bronx community to visit us in Southern Blue. Every weekend, every, every week, we appreciate to see them. That's what I, I have to see now. Right. Ex explain to me what the problems are for businesses in that area. What is, what is the question again? I said, what are the problems of businesses in that area? In, in, what, what, in the Southern Blue, we located at uh, 8, no, 1158 Southern Blue. Right? Yeah, I know that, but... I. Uh, maybe he's not understanding. Hang on there, Abdu, and we'll, we'll chat with Carrie here in the studio. Explain to me what the problems are of the businesses in that area. So in surveying businesses, we went store to store and um, spoke to the businesses on Southern Boulevard. And in surveying them, one of the main issues that they were having was um, attracting uh, residents, attracting shoppers to the district. 
Mm -hmm. um, there are people who lived in the, live in the area and have lived in the area for a long time. And there are also new members who are moving into the neighborhood because of new affordable housing construction um, that's going on. But a lot of people weren't looking to Southern Boulevard as a place to shop. And so that's one of the reasons why we um, helped uh, the merchants to form the association as well as to launch southernboulevard.org, which is the new website that represents the district. Talk to me about the nature of businesses. Uh, can I assume that they're mom and pop businesses? Are there franchises? Is there a mixture? You really characterize it so people who might not be familiar with the area can get familiar with the area. There's a mixture, but predominantly it's mom and pop businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so most are one to two person operations, um, ranging from hair salons to um, bodegas to clothing stores like Abdu Yaya's store, um, as well as uh, convenience stores as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of variety on Southern Boulevard. Um, there are a lot of services on Southern Boulevard as well. Um, from nonprofit organizations that provide uh, health services to others. And so there's a really uh, broad mixture of organizations. And How the are the businesses doing? I mean, I know that businesses and small businesses throughout the Bronx and mm -hmm. really everywhere are having problems. But tell me how the businesses are doing. Are they struggling? Are they doing okay? And of course, everybody wants more business. Where, where are they at right now? It's a tough time for businesses. Um, businesses on Southern Boulevard continue to, um, you know, just take whatever effort and, and um, strategies they can to uh, attract customers to their stores. Um, the economic situation, of course, has affected how much money people have to spend, and they're spending it as prudently as possible. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to help Southern Boulevard businesses, since they are in the neighborhood, to reach out to customers, to potential residents in the neighborhood, um, to shop in their stores. Are there empty stores on Southern Boulevard? There are empty stores on Southern Boulevard as well. So there's as well. opportunities as well for other people to open businesses, but of exactly. course you can't attract people to open a business if uh, there's, there's not good activity and there's not a, a good sense of commerce. Done. Well, one thing that we have found out, because we've done um, economic analyses in the area, and one thing we found out is that there are $146 million that's leaking out of the neighborhood. So people are shopping. They're just not necessarily shopping on Southern Boulevard right now. That's a very important number. How much money again? $146 million. Per year? Per year. Uh, when you say leaking, I have a sense of what you might be referring to, but mm -hmm. why don't you tell me what that means? People are spending money outside of the neighborhood. So they are shopping, they're just how not you, shopping in the that? neighborhood. So we worked with a consultant, um, JGSE Group, with the help of the New York City Department of Small Business Services. And they ran these analyses of different categories, um, sales categories, uh, retail sales. And they saw, based on um, the population in the neighborhood, as well as the income in the neighborhood, what people in the neighborhood were spending outside, in a quarter mile radius, a half mile radius, and a one mile radius around Southern Boulevard. And from those analyses, $146 million is being spent outside of the neighborhood. Uh, I, I'm just going to guess now. Grocery? Uh, clothing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can go electronics, <laughs> electronics, all of the above, right? Exactly. Do those Bar Barber services... shop. Oh, say it again. The bar barber shop. Barber shop, hair salons, and mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. <laughs> what, Abdu, what in your mind would make people want to shop and in in the Bronx on Southern Boulevard and spend that money where you are, as opposed to taking that money and spending it elsewhere? Okay. For me, we want to grow the area, like uh, how other areas uh, movement. We want Southern Boulevard have a great activity for mm -hmm. the people to come. Don't go out of Southern Boulevard. Have right. to appreciate Southern Boulevard shopping. That's what we are. That's our goal now to let people to stay in the area and shopping in the area. Right. So the idea is to keep the money there. What what will attract some of the? And again, we're not talking about people from the outside. It'd be great if uh, people from the outside would spend money, mm -hmm. but we're really addressing Bronx sites now. Exactly. What would uh, it take, or what will it take? Do you think? to keep Bronx sites uh, from spending outside of the neighborhood and keep it in the neighborhood? So it's a combination of things. Some of the things that we're doing is exactly raising the profile of the businesses that currently exist in the area. So southernboulevard.org um, has a list of all of the businesses on Southern Boulevard. We also have a hard copy business directory that's available as well. Um, and, you know, just marketing uh, through newsletters and through 
raffles and other events that merchants come together to have. They have coordinated sales. I, I think the idea of a website, and this is to me one of the central reasons why I wanted to do this, I know the Daily News wrote about it, mm -hmm. um, why I wanted to do this on the show, the idea of a merchant association setting up a website mm -hmm. is a very good one. There's a, just a kind of a, a generic uh, picture. But Jane, if we have their website, I'd like to put up their website on the screen. That would be, uh, there's some of the pictures, but I'd like to see the website. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what it took to launch the website, because I really want to um, kind of talk to other people in the Bronx and other uh, uh, merchant districts in the Bronx to let them understand what, what's possible about mm -hmm. it. So give me some of the background about this website. So one of the first things we did, as I mentioned, is to survey merchants in the neighborhood. And one of the key things they said was that they wanted to have a really distinctive character and identity for the neighborhood. Um, and so the southernboulevard.org website was an avenue to, um, you know, assuming that character and that identity or creating it. So the next thing that we did was we applied to the New York City Department of Small Business Services for technical assistance to create the website. So they, see, this is another reason why I wanted to kind of make it somewhat educational for our mm -hmm. other business owners. You don't necessarily have to do this alone. There might be technical assistance out there. Uh, they, they provided what? They specifically provided a webmaster and a design? Exactly. They um, provided a, you could say a designer for the website and we provided all the content. We provided guidance in terms of the color, the color scheme, the tone of the website, right. um, uh, creating a logo. You know, the Southern Boulevard merchants, one of the merchants on the boulevard created the logo for the, mm -hmm. for the Southern Boulevard Merchant Association, which is featured on the website as right. well. And so, um, you know, just working with that technical assistance consultant, we put that together. You know, I, I want to go into the website for, for a second, but um, so people can see that right now. Mm -hmm. When did it launch, and have you seen a difference in, maybe not a boost in business, but at least the nature of commerce as a result of uh, putting that website up? So the website launched officially in June, toward the end of June. It's a little soon, Yes, really, it's very early. It's still very right. early, and one of the reasons why we're so grateful for being on this show is that it will, you know, just let other people know about the website. It's mm -hmm. a way for communicating that information. And, and one, one of the things I loved, and I, I have to admit, I, it looks to me like it still needs to be developed, but Jane, if we can put that up there, when you click on, let's say, stores, it lists each store has its own little little spot on there. Exactly. I think that's very, very helpful. Exactly. I, you can actually see where the store is on a map as well so you're able to um, locate them how many spatially. of us when we say okay for example I'm buying clothes for my my kids uh, in um, you know for school will say where in my neighborhood can I get you know school uniforms or school clothes and you do that and all of a sudden Yonkers pops up <laughs> uh, you know, a shopping mall in New Jersey pops up but you say gee all right I guess you know honey I guess we got to go somewhere else and now there's there's a chance that it'll uh, pop up with with uh, Southern Boulevard. The Southern Boulevard, exactly. yes, exactly. So you, all you have to do is go to www.southernboulevard.org, spelled out, or southernblvd.org, <laughs> okay. and it will take you to the website. Right. And there you can see uh, uh, on the screen, folks, can see the strip. And then uh, there's a place where you can, I think if you scroll down a little bit, you can click uh, uh, some of the businesses that are below that map and you, you know you can then pick up uh, each individual business the one thing it looks like the stores themselves are going to need to build their own infra web infrastructure exactly as um, as the yeah, website there, there's that list of stores, gets right? more feet and more teeth and more attention um, the goal will be to have pictures of each of the stores on the website so people can actually see what the um, stores look like even before they head out to the boulevard to shop. Is this modeled after anything else or did you folks say, you know what, we figured this out, this is how we want to do it? So this is about the second or third year that the Department of Small Business Services has offered this kind of um, support to districts. And so what we did was looked at some of other, some of the other districts across New York City that have taken advantage of this program. Is, and we is there pulled a good example of, of one? I mean, um, not that we want to shop there. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep it here in the BX. But. Um, I think that the WAFA website, Washington Avenue Prospect Heights Association okay. in Brooklyn. They did um, a good job with it. Yeah, that's a good example of a very interactive site that has different mm -hmm. um, events. And, you you know, as seen on our side as well, we do have a lot of community events um, on the website because it's about building community as well, building community among merchants as well as among residents and just restoring that pride of place um, in Southern Boulevard. When, when uh, a bid is established in many of the communities in the Bronx where a bid is established, um, the merchants have to put up some money and it becomes a, you know, a financial commitment. Did merchants have to put up uh, any 
money to help uh, launch this? Or is it really, I mean, you got the website and that was a good start? The website is a start. It's mm -hmm. really a grassroots. So they didn't, I mean, they didn't this have is to. again, you know, everybody says, oh, let's have a bid in our area. <laughs> but then everybody has to pony up or whatever it is. And, you know, I forget the numbers off the top of my head. But, but you're saying in this case, it was really a matter of getting people together. Right. And in this case, this is how this association started. Everyone does not start in the same way. Some start as biz, some start as associations. This particular neighborhood started as an association, you know, the, the group started as an association. Right. Um, and perhaps later on down the line, as they increase services, um, you know, increase the provision of services to merchants, they will choose to contribute funds to, um, for the upkeep of the website or for Which other services. Which will be easier because as opposed to selling them off a dream one day, mm -hmm. hopefully you'll be kind of convincing them, gee, look, you've gotten an increase in business, mm -hmm. now maybe you can do better if you invest something, which is, of course, the nature of really any good company. Exactly. Let's, uh, Jane has some pictures that she wants to show us, and let's show some of the photographs up there sure. just to get a sense, which I have to tell you, you know, they just showed them to me before the show. They really, they really look fantastic. So, Jane, pop some of these pictures up here so we can uh, take a look at... Um, uh, there we go. So this is the barbershop that Abdu uh, was um, uh, referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, just scroll through them. Let's see what we can see. Now, what is this? This is a mural, um, you know, just celebrating uh, the Bronx and Bronx music. This is a mural um, just on Southern Boulevard. That's on there. Boulevard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's our so home and our culture. Creativity and arts. This is Nature's Garden Beauty Supply. They um, make and sell soaps and uh, summer dresses and just uh, candles. It's really a broad array of And of you know, when you goods. could go to a, a big store like that, mm -hmm. you know, that sells that kind of stuff. And that's one thing. But here is Bronx people with selected goods that, you know, that, that probably relate better to us and our lifestyle as opposed to, you know, somebody from the out of Exactly. Town. And it's really personalized service. I mean, you go into these merchant stores and you really feel that you become one of them. You are a part of the family. They know you by name. They can call you by name. Uh, and this is, this is beautiful. This is the bakery shop and gallery. It's a clothing store. It's, a, it's like an art gallery and, and clothing store. They actually make their own clothing. You see, folks, this is why I'm sending you to Southern <laughs> Boulevard. That's what I'm serious about that. This is the kind of thing you get in, okay. in the Bronx and on Southern Boulevard. You could go, and I don't care where the mall is, in New Jersey or somewhere, but you're not going to see a place like this. Okay. And, of course, if you want to get the latest Bronx paraphernalia, <laughs> now, where, where, where is this? This is the bakery as well. Oh, this is so the bakery. They very much celebrate the Bronx and Bronx arts and you know that's there well, you know what I'm going to give them a free time. I, I love what I saw I got to get down there what, what is the name of this place it's called the bakery shop and gallery and their website is the bakery nyc the bakery nyc and they have com. the Bronx t-shirts mm -hmm. and, and you can actually thing. shop online as well and, and their store. I, I hate to ask it's a bakery I mean they sell cupcakes <laughs> we get, I mean we're getting shirts we get art galleries are there cupcakes and other things they don't sell cupcakes <laughs> they don't sell, okay. I don't know what they sell the bakery then. now what is this um, this is actually the Western Beef Supermarket. They expanded okay. recently, and so their deli section is really chock full of goodies. Chock full of goodies, yes. and it looks like even natural foods and all yes. that kind of stuff. Jane, I love this. We got some more? Show some more of this. I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay, we got some? Or, or did I use up all the pictures? Oh, there we go. Now, so what is this? That's the oh, outside that's the Western of the Western Beef, beef Supermarket. Uh, with free, plenty of free parking. Yes, there is. All right, what else we got? Yep. Okay, so Hello. Fruit, outdoor fruits exactly fruit now, what, and what is this? this look how beautiful that is that's the nature's garden beauty supply store so that's on the outside you can see some of the summer dresses as well as some of the items in the windows okay you, are you okay with showing these pictures these are great right yes yeah good let's go <laughs> keep going oh that was it some of the photographs and i wanted to ask you about the concept which you you had brought which we didn't show yet uh, but you can kind of see it maybe even in this postcard of the, the idea of street merchants. Now, mm -hmm. many of the shopping districts and business districts don't like street merchants because, of course, people are spending dollars with somebody who just got a license to sell for the day mm -hmm. and then they don't sell uh, in the stores. There's a picture of that same postcard. Yeah. <laughs> what is the nature of the, the street merchant business on Southern Boulevard? Is it helpful? Is it useful? One, to the merchants. Two, to the merchants who, you know, are they making money? Mm -hmm. Two, to the consumers. And three, of course, does it get in the way of the, the folks who run the stores? So what merchants have told us is that the more the merrier. The more um, vendors there are, the more foot traffic it is to Southern Boulevard, and therefore there are spillover effects to the stores themselves. Mm -hmm. So it really is kind of part of the appeal. Of exactly. It. All right, we got some more photos. I love these pictures. 
<laughs> throw, Jane said she's got a couple. Now, what, what is this? Um, this is La Mission Furniture Discount Store. Oh, you see, I thought you were going to tell me this was the, the street in Larchmont. A beautiful, <laughs> small, little, little right? A little com comfortable little street? Yes. Where you could go in and, and, and look at all the unique stores. I mean, yes. that, I'm assuming that's the kind of feel you want to give this strip in, in the big city, right? Exactly. It's a, there's a diversity of, of products and services that people can mm -hmm. take advantage of in a small area. Right. This this is a, an interesting thing. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, you know, unfortunately, frankly, people don't always have a lot of money. Right. But, you know, there are many of our neighborhoods have thrift stores mm -hmm. of this type, not necessarily only Salvation Army, but also it's for the low budget mm -hmm. and there's plenty of good stuff in there. Exactly. There's something mm -hmm. for everyone. You can, you know, get uh, furniture tell, as well as clothing. Tell, in tell me store. about what um, else... Or, or do you have visions of doing other things other than promoting the commerce? I mean, you talked about building community. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what that means in a shopping district. Of course, the community, we want to spend a couple of dollars. But tell me what else that might mean in this particular case. So the really wonderful thing about the elected um, officers of the Southern Boulevard Merchant Association is that they're really focused on connecting with the community members, not just as shoppers, but just for that sense of community and cohesion that comes from being in a neighborhood that they're proud of. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, you know, it involves having community events. Um, like what? Um, whether it be a, there are a couple of parks, small parks on um, Southern Boulevard. And so one of the things that they have been talking about is having an event with music, um, uh, you know, having different maybe tables for activities like food demos, you know, just to give back to the community as well. Um, and Crotona Park is just uh, in the neighborhood as well, um, just a couple of blocks over from Southern Boulevard. So that's a big attraction too. So that's why one of the things that we do on Southern Boulevard's website is to showcase the community events in the neighborhood. We want people to get out of their homes. We want them to get onto Southern Boulevard. We want them to go to the parks. We want them to take advantage of, you know, this beautiful, wonderful summer. It's been really hot, but when you go to the parks, you're able to cool down. If you go into a store, you're able to cool down. So. We just want and, people to patronize the And do you think that will have an effect on the businesses? Listen, we all have a beautiful day in the park. Yes. We have a beautiful day in our Bronx parks. Mm -hmm. But you see, and WETCO, and of course the uh, Merchant Association, sees an association with that. There are some parks that are on Southern Boulevard. There are two parks on Southern Boulevard. So the more people are walking, they're passing by stores. If there's a destination for them, whether it be a park or it's a store, they're passing by other stores. They'll be more inclined to go in. Do, do you have a sense of um, uh, projections of what you expect to see out of this? I mean, certainly you've gone about this, and frankly, I'm impressed that you've gone about it scientifically. as not like, hey, let's launch a website and see what <laughs> happens. But tell me about what you really hope to see, and, and maybe you can even give us some numbers about what the businesses have generated, how much of that $146 million you want to capture. Can just give us some context for that. You know, our goal right now is... Um, can't really be communicated in dollars, but more in terms of types of stores attracted. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, there are a few categories of retail that are missing from the neighborhood. And so the goal will be to, one, attract more of those businesses to the neighborhood and thus, again, help people to spend more of their money locally. And that has spillover effects for the existing merchants as well. Some of the existing merchants are providing the products um, that you, uh, there needs to be more I was going to ask you to give of. me an example. Let's For example, to... furniture. Mm -hmm. So we know that so furniture, no furniture store. there is, there so is, there, is. Um, one or, there are one or two furniture stores in the neighborhood, but the neighborhood needs more. And so that's why people are still spending money outside of because the neighborhood. Because they're not able to service they're all not get, the needs. Exactly. So the more of kind of like a cluster of businesses that um, the area is able to attract, then the more spillover effects that will have for everyone. You know, um, we've had this discussion, and in my mind, sometimes it, it's, a, it's a, a, a balance that you have to strike, and I don't hear that balance, that you also want to bring in the big dollars and some of the franchises into the community. I, I mean, listen, we love our mom-and-pop stores, but you want to attract franchises. Number one, are there franchises? And number two, have there been dialogue with some franchises about bringing them in? And number three, of course, what's it going to take? So there is... Um, off the top of my head, there is a Dunkin' Donuts in the neighborhood. That's a franchise. Um, 
BX Sports is coming to the neighborhood. It's not a franchise. It's actually a small business um, here in the Bronx. Um, so there are a few franchises in the neighborhood. Not a lot. The, the neighborhood is still very much a mom and pop character. And those are, you know, businesses that have held on through the high years and through the low years. And they continue to hold on. So we really want to respect that mom and pop character of the neighborhood and encourage people to shop at those stores. So that's um, really the emphasis and of course, if you attract, uh, I don't even want to suggest who it might be, <laughs> but you don't want it to be somebody who's going to compete with them and obviously may be able to compete better because they have better resources. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like you're going in, in the other direction. So the goal would be to complement what is there, whether it be through a franchise or another kind of business, but the idea is to enhance what is there, not take away from among it. Among the other uh, considerations, when you, and I mentioned earlier about launching a bid, among the other considerations when you launch a bid is that those, um, the tax, so, so to speak, speak that you pay uh, helps you with security and helps you with you know clean up talk to me about this process mm -hmm. and how you and the merchant association will address sanitation and safety and some of those other things so in assessing the needs in the neighborhood again these are some of the issues that um, have arisen is that um, you know people and merchants as well are looking for um, you know just to enhance the quality of life in the neighborhood and so we with the Southern Boulevard Merchant Association have are in talks with the NYPD you know we've been in constant conversation with the NYPD over the past couple of years um, and you know we've held a community cleanup as well uh, with the Department of Sanitation mm -hmm. over 80 people came out to clean up Southern and, Boulevard. You know I'm, I'm guessing the police department's thrilled to talk to one person in one voice to get it all done as opposed to every merchant calling. Uh, let's put up and, and if you would review for us the, the website. Jane has a nice thing we're going to put up with the website on it and uh, let's urge everybody to come to Southern Boulevard and all the other businesses. This is a good way to do it. Uh, so tell me all about, uh, there's wetco.org, but also we have the Southern Boulevard uh, website. Tell me what that is. Yes, yeah, so the um, the website is www.southernboulevard.org right. and is an online presence of uh, Southern Boulevard merchants and the community overall. And it features news events, community events, uh, merchants. If there, are, if there are sales events, it will feature that. There are newsletters as well. And, um, and I'm going to jump in and say, uh, folks, take a walk down Southern Boulevard, mm -hmm. pop your head into the stores, have a couple of dollars in your pocket when you do it. And also uh, when it comes time to buying the kids clothes for school and everything else, whether you live down there or not, if you live in another neighborhood, yeah, take a trip to Southern Boulevard. How yes. is that? That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Carrie McLean from Wedco, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And folks, if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of Bronx Talk available at our website, bronxnet.org. You click a Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar and you can find us there. And we'll see you next Monday night and every Monday night at 9 for Bronx Talks. Thanks to producer Jane Floro, director Michael Arias, Dina, William, and our cast of thousands who are around us and up in the booth. And to you, good night. Thank you. How's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? Oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool. Really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost.